I want to call to order the uh, July 11th, 2023 monthly board of directors meeting for the South Granville Water and Sewer Authority. And I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. And uh, with that, we are uh, have our roll call. Board Secretary, Ms. Crystal. Commissioner Gooch. Present. Commissioner Kaczynski. Present. Commissioner McClam is absent. Uh, Commissioner Karen. Present. Councilperson Jordan. Present. And Councilperson McKellar. Present. All right, Kellen. Okay, thank Commissioner you. Is absent. If you will, please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank this for this day. We thank thee for this opportunity to come together tonight to conduct business for the South Bramble Water and Sewer Authority. We humbly ask for your guidance and direction to help us make the decisions that are best for our staff, our employees, and our customers, and lead us in the right direction. And thank you for all of your blessings. Amen. Amen. And for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. And uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? If there are no adjustments, when... Uh, that's for a uh, motion to approve the agenda. So move. I have a motion from uh, Mr. McKellar to approve. Second. Second from Ms. Jordan. Any discussion on the motion? Oh, well, then we'll go to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it. Motion carried. Our next item is review and approval of the minutes from the June 13th, 2023 regular board meeting. I trust everyone's had a chance to read these and go over them. Is there any questions? Any comments? Any concerns? Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. All the, uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item seven on our agenda. Public comments. Do we have anybody signed up for public comments tonight? We have no one to sign up. Okay. And no emails or mm -hmm. yeah, electronic correspondence. Okay. Thank you. And now we move to board discussion items. And uh, I believe Commissioner Konchinski had a uh, an item regarding customer service I did. contact. I did. Okay. Um, we had a um, we had a customer reach out to um, our executive director with an issue, a, a customer service issue, and I wanted to make sure that everybody understands that we have a link on our website for customer service, and we have a staff dedicated to that link, um, and to avoid any delays of getting a response, that would be the best way to do it. I just you know, we're, we're pretty good about responding back to customer service emails, and I want to make sure that everybody's aware of it. A lot of our customers don't know our website as, as well as we do. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And, and, and Commissioner, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, I'm not adverse to getting emails or calls for customer service. That's just part of my job, and I do that. But there are occasions when I'm away from the office or in meetings, and I can't be as attentive as I would like to to a customer. And in this particular case, I was actually off before the 4th of July and could not pick up a customer service call until I got back on Wednesday. And I think that it's advantageous if our customers understand that the many ways that they can reach us for customer service through different channels and be able to get that customer service item turned around quickly. I'm happy to report that the issue that we did have reported we were able to resolve within four hours of that day. So we still were able to provide great customer service, but thought is that maybe it's a good time to put a reminder out there for our customers, uh, the different ways that we have for communicating with us. So 
Uh, we asked Crystal to put some information together for us. So she's going to run a video here for us for the next minute. This is something that will be on record and also our public has. So, Crystal, when you're ready. The South Granville Water and Sewer Authority offers a host of communication options for customers, even in the event of a late night emergency. Our team is happy to help. During normal business hours, Seguasa's customer care team can provide to-the-minute updates and customer-specific account information. Seguasa offers expedited solutions for several common services. The GIS map can be accessed from Seguasa's homepage to provide general map data for our service area and beyond. Customers that experience water quality concerns are asked to complete a water quality questionnaire to expedite investigative and flushing services when needed. The Water and Sewer Authority provides a customer feedback portal that assigns customer comments, praise, or concerns with a staff member that will rapidly attend to your communication, normally within 24 to 48 business hours. Be sure to follow Seguasa on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Seguasa NC for updates and Seguasa news. Mr. Chair. All right. Is there anything else on the board discussion items? I've got a quick question. I apologize. I didn't preface it before, but did we get any results from the smoke testing? Yes, we did. Um, and, and Dan, our utility engineer, will have that in his presentation okay, good. this evening for us. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now on to uh, item nine, local water supply plan. And I believe, uh, Mr. Troy, you're going to take this for us. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is an approval resolution we're offering to the board this evening for our local water supply plan. A local water supply plan is an assessment of current and future community water supply needs, ability of a water system to meet them. So under general statutes in North Carolina, uh, we are required to basically issue a local water supply plan, and that plan must be updated at least once every five years. So we've reached that period where it's time for us to actually log in our official plan. Uh, we have provided the DEQ um, a copy of our water supply plan for the calendar year 2022. And part of this program requires an approval resolution. This is something new. And they can't hear in the back. They can't hear in the back. Let me just continue. This is approval resolution for the local water supply plan. So this is an item that we are required to submit to the NCDEQ uh, once every five years, and that's what we're complying with this evening. So uh, we've provided that, that information. It is attached, and we've also placed at your desktop a, another printout copy of that. Would you want an extra copy of that? It might be a little bit easier to read. Um, following the member's approval of the resolution this evening, staff will upload a copy of the resolution the NC Division of Water Resources, uh, showing compliance with the NC General Statute of this. In terms of the financial aspects, there are no direct financial implications associated with this item. I have a couple of attachments for you this evening as well. Exhibit A is the actual approval resolution for the local water supply plan. Exhibit B is the local water supply plan. We'll see on the local water supply plan that we cover both water and wastewater. There's a lot of great information on that plan. And of course, we'll make that plan available to the general public as well on our website so they can take a look at that. You can see that we're satisfying focus area one, safe, reliable, and sustainable water system with this item. And my recommendation is that the board members approve the local water supply plan resolution shown in exhibit A. If you can answer any questions the board may have regarding this item. Any questions? Are you having trouble hearing everybody or, okay. Is there any way we can adjust the volume up? Um, it is. Oops. We have to be careful when you get feedback. Got you now. Okay. Is this better? You can come closer. Okay. You can come down to the front row as well. We've got speakers in the front that will help too. So please join us if you'd like to. Okay, I'm sorry to disrupt you. Yeah, oh, no, that's fine. I, I gave a recommendation, Mr. Chair. Read my recommendation for requesting the members approve the local water supply plan as shown in Exhibit A. Okay. Any questions? Any discussion from board members? For a motion for approval. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second from uh, Ms. Kaczynski. 
Uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it, motion carries. Item 10, declaration of intent to amend our water shortage response plan ordinance. I believe you're gonna handle this for us also, Mr. Shoria. That's correct, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is our water shortage plan, bonds plan ordinance presented to you this evening. The first step of this process is a declaration of intent to amend. Let me just talk a little bit about the water shortage response plan. Um, as we are required to provide a local water supply plan, we are also required to submit a water shortage response plan. And any subsequent revisions of the plan to the Division of Water Resources review every five years. So you can see this is a companion piece. It falls within kind of the same qualifiers as being submitted once every five years uh, to the NCDEQ. So as you're aware, Saguasa recently completed its local water supply plan for calendar year 2022. In 2008, just a little bit of background, the South Granville Water and Sewer Authority adopted the water shortage response plan via ordinance. We've had subsequent updates uh, in May of 2010 and May of 2018. In terms of the analysis section, minor amendments to the current water shortage response plan ordinance are found in the table below as described. And you can see that in sections one and nine, we did some names that were updated to the plan. Section two, in the notification section, we updated our communication methods and our technologies. Now to speak again towards the amendment of this ordinance, we are required uh, to pass a declaration of intent to adopt such ordinance. We remember the same process when we talked about the backflow ordinance. So this is an amendment to this ordinance and the declaration of intent shall describe the ordinance which is proposed that the authority is going to adopt and the declaration of intent shall be submitted to each governing body for review and comment. And the authority shall consider any comments or suggestions by any governing body at any time after 60 days following submission of the declaration of intent to the governing body. I'll tell the board that following this meeting uh, later this week, we'll submit a copy of this uh, ordinance in draft to um, the chief administrative officials for our member communities, and they can share it with their staff. And then we'll be open for comments for 60 days, and those comments will be directed in writing to me, and we've provided that information. Um, I've captured that schedule for you uh, in our detail here on this memo. Once we go through the declaration of intent period, I'll actually bring this item back for the board to review and the ordinance and to approve it. And then following that, then there is an approval resolution for that piece. So this will be coming back to you in the next 90 days or so, as far as this item goes. Uh, again, financially, there's no direct costs associated with this item. And I provided to you in Exhibit A, a declaration of intent to adopt the draft water shortage response ordinance and exhibit B, the draft water shortage response plan. Uh, our strategic plan alignment is focus area one, safe, reliable, and sustainable water system. We'll add before I give you my recommendation. The review period, the comment period begins July 14th, 2023 and ends September 15th, 2023. And that's listed on the declaration of intent. The declaration will also be published on our website well or available for viewing should um, customers stop in here to our customer welcome center. So my recommendation this evening is that the board of directors approve the declaration of intent to adopt the draft water shortage response plan ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions, comments? Do we have uh, the historical data from the last major drought as to how far below the whole basin we were? You know, I don't have that information at my fingertips, but we can go through our files and look to that. Curiosity, I know Raleigh was within days. We were way ahead of them, I believe. We, I think at one point we had I think, 50 days of water remaining. I think Raleigh was down to 10. Okay. But unfortunately, okay. but you know, I think it was one of those 07 ish, 08. Let's see if we have anything on file for that. Yeah. Be interesting. Yeah. Would. I remember Durham got so low, they ended up buying some water from Kerry. Yes, 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 yes. Just an aside. Thank you. Any, any other questions? 
comments, concerns? Okay. Well, we'll entertain a motion then. So move. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for the board of directors to approve the declaration of intent to adopt the draft water shortage response plan ordinance. Is there any questions on the motion? When it comes back from the municipalities, we would we'll vote on it. This is just intent to adopt and we would formally adopt it after it comes back from the municipality. That is correct. I will look at the comments that come back to me in the next 60 days. And then if there are substantive changes, I will redline those and provide those to the board at the meeting so that you can see what those changes are. So you'll know what the final ordinance looks like and you'll have an opportunity to review and approve that ordinance at that point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? Being no questions, then we'll call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay, item 11 on our agenda is the fiscal 2223 in capital improvement fund designation. Mr. Richard Balmer. How are you tonight, Richard? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I don't know how everybody else is. One last financial item for the fiscal year 2023 is for the board to designate capital improvement funding. Just a brief background. In 2008, so block the board adopted the resolution set up and establish a CIP designated fund for future capital improvement. It um, basically outlines this copy of it in your agenda. Basically, outlines what will be capture of capital improvement. And then in 2015, that resolution was amended to uh, tweak the language regarding depreciation and how it's going to be calculated. Uh, the analysis is that the swath of board resolution dated 12, May 13, 2015, which is capital one, is in the powers and duties set forth in the general statute 59 25, delegating certain authority to the boss tax director. Um, basically, you saw in your agenda that you have a history since 2008 of what the board has previously approved the designated fund balance. And what we're recommending for June 30, 2023, is this 2023 funding. You also have capital three, a current year reconciliation showing what came into the fund balance and what was going out of the fund balance, how it was spent. Those are all items that the board approved designated fund balance use in budget amendments. The recommendation is that the SWAS Executive Director and Finance Director recommend that the board designate $1,461,903. This recommendation is the cumulative net effect of funds received, earned, and spent during fiscal year 2023 and or are committed to be spent for various projects as reflected on the schedule provided. Um, just a little background on the schedule the necessary funds for this. The IP designation were transferred on 7 through 23 into the capital improvement project bank accounts as outlined in the ordinance. The natural aspect is reflected on the attached schedule of the section of the board result, board result and came up in the net designated capital improvement fund for approximately $5,270,702 as of June 30, 2023. That's the amount that will be available for future capital improvement needs. Just one note that the accounting does not include the remaining 29.6 million of offer grant funds since they have not been officially committed yet to the project. Your attachments are the board resolution dated May 12, 2015, board designation history schedule, and the fund balance calculation for fiscal year 22-23. The strategic plan alignment, which is focus area one. Safe, reliable, and sustainable water system to enhance the financial and operational components of the water system, support capital investments and efficient operations. And the same is true for the uh, sanitary sewer and focus area three. The recommendation is that the SWAS board designate $1,461,903 for designated capital improvement project funds as of June 30, 2023, and authorize the finance director to transfer funds as needed without further notification. Answer any questions you may have about any, any questions? Process or the schedules. This thing's throwing me off. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm at home for my home. 
<laughs> you are. <laughs> They're winding up on the street out there. Any questions, comments? When it says to transfer funds as needed, that's out of the one point four million, right? We're not talking about any more money. No, it's just it's, it's saying to transfer any fund into the accounts uh, to to have a cumulative fund balance of five point two million. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? There's no discussion, no questions, and we'll entertain a motion. We have to have a motion. We do. Okay. I'll make a motion that the board designate 1.461903 designated capital improvement project funds as of June 30th and authorize the finance director to transfer funds as needed without further board approval. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any questions on the motion? All right, being there, no questions, and we'll go to the vote. All those in favor, aye. Okay. All those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it. Motion carries. And this brings us down to uh, item 12, South Grand Water and Sewer Authority Employee Benefits Contract Renewals. And I think... Uh, you going to help us with this item here, Mr. Troyer? I sure am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is an overview of the contract renewals we had for Zaguasa employee benefits for our fiscal year 23-24. The board approved the FY 23-24 budget expenses related to employee health care benefits. Zaguasa provides medical insurance, dental insurance, long-term disability insurance, and vision insurance benefits to its employees desire to participate. Last fiscal year, we had uh, Cigna as our medical insurance provider and Guardian as a provider for dental insurance, vision insurance, and long-term disability insurance. So throughout the year, the fiscal year, we look at different benefit packages for our employees. We're trying to match up the best insurance programs that we care, can and healthcare costs, the best cost for us. We'll see that in our renewal period, our benefit strategy consultant was able to negotiate insurance pro programs with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Guardian. Uh, the following values represent full staffing at Seguasa. So I have a table in our financial section. We've run the calculated costs out at 100% staffing as far as our budget. Uh, we normally run at the 90-95% staffing levels throughout the year. And our budgeted item in fiscal year 23-24 for our employee health care costs was $467,506. So in the financial section, the table summarizes basically our FY22-23 plan year provider cost, $442,449. You can see the increase in our fiscal year 23-24 plan providers cost at $482,386. So we're about $15,000 above our actual or our budgeted cost. But again, keep in mind, uh, that's at 100% full staffing. We never seem to achieve that, unfortunately. But so we have that headroom basically to stay within budget. So I think that we're fine here. Um, we concluded our open enrollment in June um, and I'm looking for authorization by the board uh, to execute the contract renewal for the FY324 year uh, with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Guardian. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, well, then we'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that we authorize the executive director to execute the contract renewals for fiscal year 2324 the Blue Cross Blue Shield and Guardian. And thank you. We have a motion to hear a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions about the motion? And there's no questions, then we'll go to the vote. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, likewise. Ayes have it. Motion carries. And now we're item 13 of project status updates from my utility engineer. Dan, how are you doing? Fine. It's nice to see everyone. 
I don't have my telephones to go off with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you can hear me. We can hear you. So it was a fairly, a fairly uneventful month once we put the last. The projects are moving on well. Uh, the major projects specifically, I-85 project, lead and copper. Uh, basically, this good solid engineering going on. Um, we did uh, just today get the second round of results from our PFOS testing. And I'll go over those in just a second. Uh, the SDF study is going along fine. Um, we're feeding them information from our GIS system. Uh, shape files specifically. Um, storage tank drawings came today or yesterday, rather, and everything looks fine. They're ready for review. Um, water meters, and um, that's that's in process. We're still doing um, price inventories and cost estimations, but there's uh, we did have a few system failures that I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, we're starting to collect ideas for some future projects. And of course, the Environmix Award and uh, Technology has been in the news and uh, it's quite impressive. So, um, the I 85 Sewer Interceptor project is uh, going away, going along with no particular surprises. A uh, little photo there you can see is of the cores that they've been. Uh, drilling and they're resting uh, quietly at the wastewater treatment plant in this in an enclosed space. So developers are to come and look at the soil samples if they can do that. Uh, they're safe there for a couple of years. Um, Scott uh, is working on the the uh, funding application and with USDA and CDM Smith. Uh, I haven't been in those meetings, but um, it's a big project, and, and the work they've done so far that I've seen is very impressive. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some graphics for you uh, next time, but um, I think you would you would be very pleased with the work they're up, they're up to. Um, drilling is continuing, and um, there's some field work that's, that's ongoing, and uh, a lot of it has to do with the uh, funding application. Is that pretty much it for that one? Thank you. Um, and uh, in the near term, CDM Smith is going to continue with their field work. And um, the, the uh, timeline is, let's see, in everything should be done by December, as I recall. In other words, the application should be ready for review. It's a $70 million loan, so that's uh, quite a big deal. Does anybody have any questions about the ID5 project? Or? Yeah, Dan, if you just back up technically, um, we're looking at a USDA loan amount the board authorized at $40 million. We have a $70 million project cost at this point. So, okay. and yeah, we are we are looking to finish up. And I, I think the board has been updated through a separate correspondence from me. We're looking to get uh, approval from the USDA. We're hoping uh, late August, early September, ahead of the federal fiscal year, which begins in October. Uh, and of course, all that information will be coming back to the board. Uh, there's nothing that we approve at, at my level. This comes back to the board for review and consideration. Thank you, Dan. So the lead and copper project, um, I'm very impressed with the work that Hayes and Sawyer is doing. Uh, we've been feeding them information also from our GIS system. And their, their GIS folks are able to interpret that and and make uh, judgments about where we might have to do some actual field work, uh, digging up and looking for uh, goosenecks and uh, and lead and copper pipes. But there's no no surprises so far. Everything's on track, and it's a, it's a it's a delight to work with those folks. They're they're excellent. Um, PFAS sampling. We we just today got back the results from the second round of of. Uh, testing in, in Lake Holt, and really the surprise was that there was no surprise. I was kind of expecting or hoping for there to have been a hot spot at the, at the mouth of uh, Camp Creek. The folks from the uh, 
that uh, National Guard came and said, well, we've never used PFOS in our uh, firefighting training up there. And I thought, well, okay, we'll see about that. And sure enough, um, there was no significantly high levels of PFOS coming down that creek. So we're going to reevaluate and to do a third round of PFOS testing. It's fairly, it seems to be fairly homogeneous throughout the, the reservoir. And um, the incremental knowledge that we've gained probably wouldn't change the outcome of our mediation plan. So we're going to begin to turn our attention toward costing out and, and perhaps some preliminary design ideas for how do we handle PFOS. I've been learning about it a bit more. It's, it's, a, it's everywhere. It's just everywhere. And even in bottled water, we've got levels of 1758 of the PFOS number. PFOA, you can see we're at 7.7. .7. Bottled water has nine. So uh, it's it's just everywhere. And, Look, uh, can you repeat that? Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's so really, according to the, the two reports, I don't have the figures here in front of me, but um, I can provide that. They, they I've gone down the rabbit hole on these artificial <laughs> intelligence search engines. So if you don't know it, look up on chat GPT four or Google Bard, and it's unbelievable what they can find in you know, 10 seconds. So I asked it, what's what are the PFOS levels in bottled water? The top 10 leading bottled water companies. And here they were anywhere from four to nine parts per trillion. And and you would expect them to have been you know without, and some were, but some are. So uh, if you're interested, I can send you that. Consumer reports have quite a few articles. And, and the other thing that I found interesting just this afternoon was that um, they make recommendations for filters, home filter systems that range in price from $100 to $430 that do a pretty effective job of filtering out. So, yeah. Would you, would you send me that information you have and I'll forward that to the board? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure. Sure. That was very interesting. Yeah, that is interesting that you know, the bottled water contains four to nine parts per trillion. And what levels are we finding in the lake? Uh, for PFOS, so PFAS is a, is a catch-all phrase for lots. Yeah. There's something like 1,400 different forms of PFAS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our PFOS, according to... Um, the testing company has ranged from 17 to 58 parts per trillion. And the PFOA has gone, has ranged from the first test to the second test, 7.7 .7 to 15 parts per trillion. Okay. So it's, <laughs> you know, up in the Northeast and Ohio and those places, it, and, and down at the coast, of course, it's, it's 10 times that now. Okay. So it's not terrible. This is pre treated. In a lake, yeah. and the bottled water is treated. It's treated right. in a bottle. Right. Pretty darn close. Right. I think the public would be very shocked to find out that they're going to the grocery store and buying PFAS PFOS, and they're scared to death about well, it. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just everywhere. It's and, and I can I can put together a report on various articles that I found. It's it's very interesting, actually. And you know, but. The other thing that's interesting is a lot of the, 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 the most popular remediation technology is this granular activated carbon. And there are only a few companies that are selling it. And of course, demand for that stuff's going crazy. Everybody wants to install those remediation systems. Those Happily coconut built. shells. What's that? Sorry. It's the coconut shells. <laughs> well, and also, you know, the resins are coming on fairly strong as well. So you know, there will be there will be ways that can be dealt with, but, but happily we're not down on the Cape Fear River with you know and that's and I, I thought it was very made, before we move on, just just want to remind the board that we have in our FY2324 CIP approved five hundred thousand dollars towards our design towards the mitigation of the PFAS for our water facilities. So we are working on that presently. Uh, and, and moving in that direction. So I just want to impress upon you that we're not sitting on our hands here. We're continuing to move forward with this. Um, our testing, as Dan said, seems to be um, 
resolving itself it's the same levels no ahas here so we look to probably sunset that um, but we basically want to do our own testing just to support or validate some of the testing that was done in the last couple of years by sources outside of civil law. So, so it was a way for us to balance some of those results to look at that. So, yeah. Thank you, if Dan. If our levels had been significantly higher than everywhere else, that would be different. Yeah, but Thank you. happily, it's, it's not. And, um, and happily, we're, we're here in North Carolina, not in Ohio or Illinois or places in New York. Um, so we've got our, our Mavericks here, and they're beautiful and, and uh, very interesting. Apparently, they use a lot of aluminum in the body construction. Uh, I calculated the, I went and looked at the fuel logs for the Toyotas, and they get 18 to 20 miles to the gallon. So if they drive uh, 70, uh, I'm sorry, 17,000 miles per year, I just did some quick calculations. We we'll probably say per truck about a thousand dollars a year in, in fuel. Mm. We pay two dollars and sixty-four cents a gallon last month for gasoline. Put together at the DOT fuel station. So, so anyway, the the meter readers are going to be very happy. They're they're looking forward to nice new trucks. And they're beautiful. The uh, the tags are on them. The uh, fuel. Uh, keys are on their way. So they should be in service, I would say, within a week, I think. Yeah, graphics, I mean. Oh that is correct. In fact, Dan, I think I, I saw one today, one of our meter readers driving that, and they have the uh, Sigwasa logo on the door now. We yeah. also have uh, identification on all of our vehicles, which is very easily identified by the public and ourselves. And we also have the new GPS equipment installed in those new vehicles as well. So we can do vehicle tracking and look at our actual mileage and statistics as well. Thank you. So moving on to the smoke test, that was an interesting day. It went very well, uh, considering, and uh, it only took us about half a day to do the entire Roosevelt Street from the bottom of the hill up to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's basically just a gas motor that dumps, it's like a, one of these stunt pilot airplanes that just dump oil onto the exhaust manifold and then it's blown into the into the sewer system. You can see in the first picture of the smoke coming out of this manhole. And um, we didn't find any leaks. We saw lots of, of smoke shooting out of the vents on the tops of houses, and nobody complained. Nobody came out with a, <laughs> waving any sort of flags or weapons or anything. So we survived that. And um, there was one leak that we found on a little loop of apartments. It was under a concrete driveway. And I need to communicate that to the owner of the apartments. It's not ours. But, um, and I was talking to Joel and uh, Robert today about what are we going to do? I mean, we, we didn't find any leaks, but we still had a application. Apparently, the designs for the new Joel P uh, station include some carbon filters, according to Joel. I, I haven't seen the drawings, I haven't looked at that yet, but. Um, and then I talked to CDM Smith about what, I forget his name, the fellow that, uh, that's doing the SDF study. Well, they, yeah, and he has some experience with the biofilters in the past, and they work really well. So depending on how urgent that is, uh, still, we can we can take a short time action or we can... Mm -hmm. You know, we've got it. We've got it under control long term. Uh, the Environmix project is uh, is another interesting one. I, I called the company and had them explain to me how that all works. Uh, if you move to the second page, you can see basically they use it's, it's sort of counterintuitive. They use um, compressed air in an anaerobic tank for the sole purpose not to mix in oxygen. And upset the the bugs and the chemist biochemistry, but basically to use it to move the the liquid around. So it, the uh, compressed air just basically makes these giant bubbles, and it does a great job of scouring the the tank and keeping everything mixed beautifully. And since it is uh, a bunch of small little nozzles, they can control it and dial in and optimize the, the, uh, the activity of the microorganisms. So um, 
that, that turned out to be an excellent project. The energy savings of 75%. There's hardly any moving parts at all. And uh, it came out really well for us. And of course, there's been some news about it and uh, they received an award from the vendor. So it's, uh, it's some good press for Siglasa. But uh, yeah, the, the thing that interests me being an engineer is that it's just, could figure out how they could possibly be pumping air into this tank, even though it was an anaerobic tank. But they explained that it's it's just little bitty blasts of air and little tiny pipes, so it's kind of neat. But <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing, um, so last December, of course, you might remember uh, there were some people down in Moore County shooting up. Uh, power stations. So in December 1st, um, they, passed, they passed a law that makes attacking a utility felony. And that sort of raised our awareness about the security of our pump stations and our facilities. We have some security. We have chain link fences and barbed wire at the top. But uh, Scott and I had a really interesting meeting today with a security camera company that uh, it's, uh, it's very impressive capabilities that they have now. And so we're working, we're developing some costs of uh, improving our signage and um, installing better lighting and uh, cameras at our critical locations. Um, I, should, I, I probably won't. <laughs> Perhaps at another time I can explain it. Technology that we saw. Maybe next, next yeah, yeah. I could. And, um, and then one of my favorite parts of the, the presentation is that so I call it this time I'm calling them Siglasa stars. Uh, that's Tasha on the left. She keeps the lab running at the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, I was expecting this to be a, a month with no incidents. Two weeks ago, uh, we lost power at the pump station at the lake. And uh, Jonathan and Scotty uh, responded. It was on the weekend. It was raining like crazy. We went down there, and uh, it turned out that the breaker had not flipped properly. So with, with some instruction by the electrician, they were able to uh, get the circuit breaker switch flipped over. I inspected it. It's clean. And there, were, there didn't seem to be any difficulty with it, but it just takes a very firm back and forth. Uh, motion in order for it to work because it's a big switch. And uh, and then Saturday, uh, <laughs> we uh, we had a bit of a situation on 12th Street. And uh, anyhow, over by the water treatment plant, we had split open a um, a 20 inch uh, water main. And if, if you look at the next page, you can see the guys are. Yeah, that's what we <laughs> that's what we named. Uh, so I'm on hot, hot on the trail of the, of the cause of that sort of a failure. Where the pipe was split open about eight feet long, and it was a nice three eighths inch thick iron pipe. It would have taken a fair amount of force to do that. So I'm I'm learning as much as I can as quickly as I can about the water hammering phenomenon, and and I think the, the what we've got to do is do a better job of stabilizing the water pressure throughout the system. It's, you know, we've got old pipes. We have to be more gentle and be very careful with how fast we open and close valves and raise and lower the levels in our, in our water towers at, at a start. And then, of course, there are other technologies we can put in accumulators and, and flow restrictions and things like that. But it was a beautiful day. Uh, and if we apply ourselves, we should be able get away from this kind of, of uh, surprise. But it went well, and um, that's why Adam and uh, Alex made it into the uh, Siglasa Stars. They, those guys are unbelievable. We worked all day and um, pulled it out, patched it in, and it was a beautiful thing. So that is it. Any questions? If you were in New York, there would have been 50 children out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> playing out whatever. Uh, one of my jobs, I fetched water and drinks for everybody, but also I made the rounds and, and put out notices. 
and uh, everybody was great. All the folks were very appreciative. Good. And yeah, it was nice to see. And and one lady wanted to show me her landscaping, and you know, it was just really, it was really nice. And they came out and complimented the guys, and um, and yeah, it was it was a good day. But you can tell it's not for everybody. I mean, they're up to their knees in water. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, it wasn't too cold. When it's cold, you just get cold. That's it. So, yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? No questions? Thank you. There's no questions. And uh, next item on our agenda is comments from our executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank the board this evening for the approval of all the legislative items that we had this evening to keep the, uh, the organization moving forward at a, at a nice quick pace. I'd also like to thank uh, the team members this evening for your presentations. So again, thank you for the, uh, the audio video presentation that you had for us. And I imagine that'll be posted on our website. Yes. And also uh, the information regarding Environmix, we also have uh, information coming out on social tomorrow, a little bit more information for you on that. Some great background. And lastly, I'd like to thank the utility crews and the supervisors for their work last weekend uh, on that water main break that we had. Um, they did an excellent job on that. And as I was having conversations with Commissioner Uch and Kinchiski yesterday, we talked about it's feast or famine. You either get cold winter and water main breaks, or you get 95 degrees in a water main break. So I'm not sure if our crews like either one or the other, but they do a great job responding uh, to us and our customers to get that water back on to everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wren, you got any comments for us tonight? Right, right. Any. Okay, moving right along then. Comments from our board members. Mr. McKellar. Oh, no comments. Okay. Mr. Karen. Right. Mr. Jordan. I'd just like to thank the team for preparing that um, water main break. It was a uh, they actually did it pretty quickly. I was very surprised. Um, so I was, of course, in the middle of laundry, but <laughs> <laughs> they worked out really well. So, I mean, they, they do a fantastic job. So I just want to publicly thank them for all that they do. Thank you. Ms. Kaczynski. Um, again, I want to echo everyone's comments. Um, Mr. Schroyer, you have got a excellent staff. You have chosen some very, very excellent people. Thank you. And kept Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Richard. Um, and the dedication that I see when, when situations like this arise and the timeliness of how fast things get fixed, it shows all over, I think. Um, I was wondering if I could get copies of the slides that Dan did for his presentation. Sure. I think, I think we make, we, we'll, we can push those out to the board. I think we, Publish those as well as part of our agenda packet that we post, correct, in our archive section. But we'll be happy to send that out to board members as well. I'll put it in my city report when I do it. Um, I'm glad there's no surprises with the PFAS also. Absolutely. Very grateful. And thank you all for your presentations tonight, too. Especially Crystal, I love the customer service presentation. Thank you. And I'd like to echo the thanks to the uh, employees of Saguasa, their, their teamwork, how they everybody pulled together and worked in a, in all emergency situations, especially the one with the water main break. And I sincerely thank them for for their efforts. They uh, they uh, they work very hard for us, and we appreciate it. And uh, I'd just like to thank those that came out tonight to the meeting and uh, appreciate you being here. Hope you uh, learned something. And, uh, you know, as, as our engineer Dan was talking, the, when you go around and meet people face-to-face, -face, this is uh, pretty nice. Most of them are really nice and understanding, and, and uh, it's a very different persona you meet in person. And uh, thank you for going door to door and, and working. Thank you. And uh, with that, uh, 
is there any other business to come before us tonight? Do we have any items for closed session? Okay, if there's no more business to come before us tonight, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah. We have a motion. Do we hear a second? Second. We have a second. All those in, is there any discussion on the motion? And all those in favor, say aye. aye. And all those opposed, I don't hear any opposition, so we are adjourned. And thank you. <laughs>